against temptation, but deliver us from evil. All thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory for
glorious day it is to worship our God. Amen. Please be seated. Now it is time for Deacon Paul Park to lead us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to save us. Thank you for everything you have done for us. In your grace, we are able to be here and worship you. Lord, we just want to use this time to ask for your forgiveness of our sins. We make the same mistakes over and over again, but we just want to pray for the courage to always get back up and walk towards you. We pray for our pastors and all the congregation of this church, especially for our senior pastor, Hannah Kim, for the wisdom to lead this church. We pray that our congregation will be an example of Jesus' love. We pray for all the churches of this country to walk in love and to share the gospel to those who haven't heard. Lord, we want to pray for the Wake Ministries at this time. Please remember all the members who are continuously serving this church. Especially, we pray for our Pastor Pong Han for, for the courage and the wisdom to lead the Wake Ministries. Please use Pastor Pong Han to preach your message to us. Also, as we, we, we ask that, you would open our ears so that we may hear your voices. We ask everything in your name. Amen. 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 The scripture reading for today comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. I invite you to listen to the word of God as it is read for you. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on, this, fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. <coughs> Whoever has ears, let them hear. Amen. Amen. Today I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you joining us here at Awake Ministry, Myungsung Church's English Worship Service. We are so glad to have you here. And if you are joining us for the first time, I want to especially welcome you and invite you to come forward after the service as we would love to get to know you better. I'd also like to let you know that cell group meetings have started again, and I want to invite and encourage you, if you haven't already, to join a group. If that is something that you would like to do, please speak to one of our volunteers for more information. Let us all continue in our prayers for all of those who are currently affected by any illnesses. May they receive healing and a full recovery. We are also continuing in our monthly promotional activities for this department. And if that is something you would like to become involved in, please speak to our deacon, Bo Hyung Yoon. We would love to have you help us get the word out about Awake Ministry. I'd also like to lift up a special prayer request for this congregation. Our Kwon Sung Nim Nan Rong Jung is going to have an operation to remove a tumor in her lung this week. So please, May we all join in prayers for a successful operation and a quick recovery for her. And now let us prepare our hearts for worship as we will have our Shoshana choir lead us in the song, The Lord's Prayer.
worship music. Now let us hear the word of God as Pastor Paul Hahn will deliver the sermon entitled, Let It Be Plowed. Thank you, Pastor Rachel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you all doing? Have you made a good start to New Year? Yes. Yes. Um, have you started reading the Bible yet? Yes. Yes. That's wonderful. Um, for today's sermon, I need four volunteers. Actually, not just any four. I'm going to divide. One from Tehila, and one from this second half, and one from this third half, not half, third, and one from the choir. So if you want to help me out today, please raise your hand. Anybody? Okay, if nobody raises, I'm going to appoint you. <laughs> Is that okay? Uh, actually, I'm going to give you a second chance. So who wants to volunteer for us all today? Come on. Three. Okay, comes on him. Thank you. Two. One. Zero. Okay, then your chance is over. Oh, Paul Park, thank you. <laughs> no, you. You don't have to come out, sorry. Yeah, you, you can do, do this where, where you are sitting. Um, so you can Paul Park and Gonzalo him for this part. And what about here? Today. today. Yeah, not tomorrow, today. Yeah. And one from the choir. Okay. Yes. They can come Jungmu. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I give you a, a trigger word and you need to express it with your body and possibly with some sound. So they can pull park. Your word is path. How would you express it with your body? Stop, please stand up and show us how it's done. Path. Okay, uh, you can make it more dramatic. Um, <laughs> if you, yeah, please. Path. Okay, just go for this one then, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's the one. So, members of Tehillah, remember this, okay? And for this one, your keyword is rocky. So, whenever you hear rocky, you do this. Akwansanim, would you show us how rocky looks like? Rocky, rocky okay. <laughs> okay, that looks good. So, everyone here, remember that. And these uh, people here, thorns. Akwansanim, how would you express thorns? <coughs> Okay, that's, that's good, I think, yeah. Okay, that's good enough. And here, good soil. Good soil, how would you express it? Okay, um, <laughs> um, actually, you know, you know the story. So, good soil, you are very happy. So, I want you to make some noise. Is that okay? Like, hooray, or whatever. Yeah? Doesn't look that so, you know, doesn't, doesn't, look, doesn't sound that happy there. And it, so all of you remember this, you make happy sound. Yeah? Whenever I say good soil, remember this. It's a path. Yeah? Everyone remember. And rocky. Rocky, yes. Thorns. Okay. You can, yeah, we can make it more dramatic, a little bit more. And good soil. Yeah, I, I think you can do better than this. Yes. Good soil. Yes. Okay, so here we go. Jesus was teaching people in a house. And he, after finishing teaching them, he went up from that house and went to a lake. And that lake was the Lake of Galilee. And Jesus, Jesus was there. And so many people were following him. So he had to get onto a boat and he sat down and taught the people there and met everyone stood on the shore and listened to what he said. And Jesus taught people using parables and such as this one. He said, a farmer went out 
into his field to sow some seeds, and some seeds fell on the path. Okay. And the birds came and ate it up. And some seeds fell on the rocky places. Yeah, how come rocky places look very happy? Um, anyway, um, because it didn't have much soil, uh, it sprang up quickly, but it withered when the sun rose. And other seeds fell on fell among the thorns. Yeah, it doesn't sound that painful, does it? Okay. And as it, uh, because the thorns grew up and choked the plant, it didn't produce. It couldn't produce any fruit. But some seeds eventually fell on the good soil. <laughs> okay. And it grew up and produced much fruit. And Jesus said, whoever, ha whoever has ears, let him hear, or let her hear, or let them hear. And this is how Jesus explained the parable. When anyone hears a message about the kingdom of God and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. And the seed that fell on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears and at once receives it with joy, but since there is no root, they last only a little while. When the trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns <laughs> refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. And the seed that fell on good soil is slightly decreasing in joy, but um, okay. <laughs> refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. And this is the one who produces a crop 100, 60, 30 times what was sown. Now, let's talk about the path. Yeah, you can stop now. Thank you. Yeah, you've done well. Shall we give all everyone... <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. We might try that next time. Again, anyway, let let me talk to tell you something about the path. When you hear God's word and don't understand it, it's because the evil one comes and snatches away. When the seed is scattered on the path, it just sits on the top, doesn't it? And it doesn't penetrate. It doesn't go into the soil. Now, people are not interested in God's word. Their minds are usually set on how to make more money, how to stay healthy, how to succeed, how to be approved. And when we are focused on the worldly things like that, our hearts are hardened. And when our hearts are hardened, God's word falls on deaf ears. It enters our ears and then comes out at the other end. About 10 years ago, I was serving as a volunteer in the um, education, in one of the education departments in our church. And after the service, the volunteers, you know, would gather together to make announcements and share prayer requests and, and so on. And at one time, someone stood up and started to share briefly about what he did for a living. He was running a small business, and he said that he knew a way to earn 300,001 every day. But he said he was not doing that anymore because that was easy money and he didn't feel it right. He didn't feel right about it. But when he said it, I saw someone's eye literally lit up. It looked as if that person really wanted to know how he did it. Now, if I knew 
a way to earn 10 billion won every day in a legal way, many people will come to me to find out how, you know, how, how I do it. Some people will even beg me. Uh, they will probably do pretty much anything to learn the secret. But when it comes to Christianity, it's the opposite. People are not interested, even though what God is offering them is far superior, far better than anything in this world. They simply ignore it. In fact, we Christians have to beg them to come to church. We have to beg them to believe in Jesus and participate in the service. And we are offering something very good for them. But we have to persuade them. That's very strange, isn't it? We know the way. We know the secret. We have access to heaven. In normal circumstances, people will have to beg us to teach them the way. But of course, this world is not normal. It needs to be redeemed. Now, rocky places. Now, if you are like rocky places, you receive God's word with joy. But when difficulties come, you fall away because there is no root. We are living in a country where religious freedom is protected by law. We are free to choose what we believe. Even so, there are believers whose family members persecute them because of their faith. Of course, the persecution is nothing like what's happening in North Korea, but it's persecution nonetheless. When we say grace before meals in public places or when we speak up for truth, some people will jeer us and insult us. And you might be tempted to abandon all, you know, abandon truth altogether. When things don't work out as you hoped, you might wonder whether God is there for you. And you are disappointed and you doubt the joy you first had. If something like this happens, there may be rocks in your heart that needs to be removed. Now the thorns. The seed that fall among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word. Now, there are many uh, shapes and sizes of leaves in a warm and humid climate. The leaves are broad and big. In a dry climate, the leaves are small. And in desert areas, the leaves are contracted and become thorns. When our life is dry, we are pricked by all sorts of worries and greed. When our love is not well watered with God's grace, thorns grow up and choke us. And because we are constantly pricked by the thorns, we become pricky ourselves. We prick one another. That's what happens when other things become more important than God's word. In that case, we need to remove the thorns. Now, about the good soil. The seed that falls on good soil refers to someone who hears a word and understands it. And this is the one who, who produces 160, 30 times what was sown. That is a fruitful life. That is a glorious life. And that is a joyful life. When we, are, when we are ready to receive God's word and act on it, so many wonderful things can happen. God's word is living and active. His word is perfect. The seed is perfect. So the crop will be perfect if God's word is allowed to grow up and produce its fruit. So what do we have to do? Let's say this together. Let it be plowed. The path, the rocky places, thorns. These three 
areas, grounds need to be plowed. They have to be um, turned upside down. They need to have rocks and thorns removed. The work of removal is the work of the Holy Spirit. So before you read or hear God's word, you need to pray. You should pray that the Holy Spirit would make your heart ready to receive God's word. Now, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, there is an imagery of Jesus knocking on the door of a house. Uh, I suppose many of you here probably opened the door to Jesus already. You have let Jesus in and he's entered your house. But where is he gone? Where is he? It's very easy to say, come on in, Jesus. And then you open a cupboard, get in there and stay there. Well, he's in your house, but where is he? In the Bible, there are three do nots with regard to the Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not resist the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So what we ought to do is to take him to the basement of our lives to clear out the cobwebs. We should take him to the attic to clear out the bats. We've got to invite him into the living room, the dining room, and every room. Have we grieved the Holy Spirit by doing things he's told us not to do? Have we resisted the Holy Spirit? Have we quenched him? Do we need to open up our lives more to the Holy Spirit? Is there unholiness around? We need to invite the Holy Spirit to plow our hearts. Only God can remove rocks and thorns in our lives. Only He can make us ready for His words. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. The Spirit is contrary to the sinful nature. From God's point of view, we fall. Not because we are weak, but because we are too strong. And that is when we need the Spirit to work within us, to remove the rocks and thorns, and to turn us upside down. Being filled with the Spirit, fullness of the Spirit, is not about us having more of the Spirit, but about the Spirit having more over us. Of, of us. And now for fruits. For good soils, Jesus promises an exponential increase of outcome. Perhaps what we need to be most careful about is not setting up high ideal and not reaching it, but being satisfied with low ideal. Are you too easily satisfied with, with spiritual things while you are not so easily satisfied with the worldly things? Our God is great. I encourage you to set your spiritual goal higher. Now, there was a missionary a society that had been in existence for 100 years and they, they were having a major celebration to commemorate their 100 years in existence. And they had a bishop to come and to pray a prayer of thanksgiving. And they had prepared 100 doves. After the prayer, they were going to release all the doves as symbolism of the 100 years. So they took one of the doves and gave it to the bishop he was to pray with, while holding it, and then he would release the dove, and they would release the rest 
of the doves. So he was holding the dove in his hand said, Thank you, Lord, for all these years. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you started, that we started in 1851. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we did this. Oh, Lord, we did that. And then he released the dove. And it fell to the floor dead. We need to look back with gratitude, but we should not stay there too long. We should look forward with a greater sense of expectancy. Expect miracles. Expect surprises. Expect wonderful things from God. If your heart is good soil, then Jesus promises that your fruit will be 30, 60, 100 times more than usual. That in order to be good soils, we need the Holy Spirit to work within us. And the fruit of the Spirit is joy, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And as you can see, most of the fruit of the Spirit there have to be with have have to do with our relationship with other people. So if you want to experience real growth and huge outcome, you need to come into relationship with people and serve them. Notice that the first fruit of the Spirit is love. Those who are filled with the Spirit feel love and holy joy. If we are leading an individualistic life, and expect to find comfort and warmth from worship, we will become increasingly discontent because God has called us to live together. He has given us His grace to share with one another. He loves us so that we could love one another. Let us remember that good fruit comes from good soil, Let's also remember that good soil is the work of the Holy Spirit. And let us remember that exponential growth and outcome come from community of loving people. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on us. Come into every room in our homes. Remove the things that need to be removed. Plow our hearts and soften it, we pray. May the word of God bear much fruit in and among us. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your presence. Have your way in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
us pray of this offering. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for who you are, for everything you've given us. We offer these gifts as a small token of our appreciation of your love. Like the two fish and five loaves of bread, use it for your glory, Lord. Bless everyone here as we offer this together with ourselves. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you everyone for joining to worship together today. It's such a wonderful privilege to be able to worship here with freedom. We have three. We have two newcomers and one person who's visited us two weeks ago, but we didn't have a chance to say hello. Jo uh, Byung-ju, Kim Jong-hyun, Choi Uri. Would you please stand, please? Yes. God bless you and we welcome you. We have come to the right place and we'll start praying for you from today. So welcome. And as always, we, we are really grateful for our Tehillah praise team for their wonderful commitment and service and wonderful songs and voice. Also to our Shushana Choir with a wonderful song as well. And we have a guest conducted today because uh, conductor Yi Woo Gyeong, Deacon Yi Woo Gyeong, uh, is involved with the um, church-wide promotion activity today. So Deacon Yi Sang Woo Jip uh, Chanim, thank you. And thank, we also thank people who prayed and read scripture for us today. So shall we bless them with a round of applause and praise our Lord. Okay, now let us all stand together. So let's ask each other, have you started reading the Bible yet? <laughs> And again, invite the Holy Spirit. Invite the Holy Spirit. And lastly, you will be very fruitful. You will be very fruitful. Yeah. That's the confession statement of faith. And I believe that God will make it come true for all of you. Our final song is same God. So let us sing together.
together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our God the Father and the plow and work of the Holy Spirit be with everyone here with their families with Byung-Sung Church and with our nations now and forevermore Amen, Amen. Amen. 